Okay, we are ready to start our next presentation. First of all, I will again to present our lecturer, Viktor Denisenko, professor of General Jonas Jamaitis Military Academy of Lithuania and assistant professor of Faculty of Communication of Vilnius University, visiting expert of East Center Poland. He is also the author of the book in the Encyclopedia of Propaganda, published by Vilnius University Press in 2021. And the topic of his presentation will be, what is information warfare? Please, Victor, start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Vitute. Uh, so nice to be a part of uh, Cybertron and uh, present my topic to everyone who is interested in information warfare and uh, propaganda and disinformation and, uh, and other similar um, things. Um, first of all, when, we, when we're talking about information for the natural question could be uh, how old is this kind of this uh, type of uh, war or war for? And uh, it was quite um, uh, funny uh, example. Uh, one of my student students, um, uh, wrote uh, uh, an essay about information warfare and uh, said that, oh, oh uh, I could not imagine that uh, it's quite old thing, but uh, in year 1991, people already talk about information war or information warfare. Uh, but the uh, finest thing is that uh, we could say that uh, information war or conception information war is much more uh, more older uh, and uh, here you could see some quotation from uh, classical uh, work of uh, Sun Tzu, uh, Chinese uh, uh, warrior uh, the art of war uh, where we could find some examples or some elements of um, uh, things that we also could uh, um, explain or um, uh, name as information war or information warfare. Uh, first of all, its uh, main principle is uh, um, be clever than your enemy uh, and uh, uh, made some uh, steps. Um, to change uh, enemy's mind or, or to spread some kind of disinformation. We could say that, uh, Sun Tzu say that uh, uh, when we are able to attack, uh, uh, we must seem unable, uh, seen by enemy, or uh, when using our forces, we must seem inactive, uh, and so on. Uh, another... Um, uh, good example of uh, uh, thinking in definitions of uh, information war. It's uh, second quotation where, when Sun Tzu said that uh, supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance uh, without fighting. Um, it means using uh, uh, on our uh, um, things that you could use uh, in this situation. And uh, when we're talking about uh, modern or contemporary uh, information war, um, we also could say in words which, you, which use George Stein uh, when he tried to uh, uh, define what is information war, information warfare uh, uh, in 1995. Uh, he said that information warfare, it's about ideas and epistemology. Uh, uh, and uh, that information warfare is about the way humans think and more important, the way humans make decisions. And it's a uh, uh, it's a very important point because um, uh, when we're talking about possibility of information uh, warfare, uh, essential thing is that uh, uh, our mind, uh, our um, decisions uh, are connected to um, 
uh, some things like uh, how we see this world, uh, which information we have, uh, and uh, according to the information, we are making decisions. Uh, quite often, um, I am uh, showing uh, uh, like a very very uh, simple example, uh, maybe even primitive example, but um, today in Vilnius uh, was rain uh, at the morning. So, and uh, if you waking up, uh, looking through a window, and you see rain, and you you need go somewhere outside of a, a home, um, you will make some decisions. One of the decision, uh, natural decision, uh, would be to uh, take umbrella, for example. Yeah, and it's very simple. We're getting some information from outside, and uh, we are making decision according to the information. But, uh, of course, it could, could be uh, uh, more complicated examples. Uh, and uh, when we are talking about... Um, uh, threat of propaganda uh, and propaganda as part of information law. Uh, it could be another uh, example. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if people uh, uh, believe that it's not possible to defend uh, their country, for example, uh, in situation of war, uh, they will not go to defend my country, because uh, if if it's not defendable, in fact, and if people believe uh, in it, uh, why they should try? It's logical. Um, so uh, and it's explaining um, uh, uh, purpose of information war. Um, talking about uh, history of. Uh, uh, information war, information warfare. Uh, it's uh, two quite similar definitions uh, in the uh, scientific world. Uh, I using, um, I want to show another uh, interesting example, also year 1995, and uh, Martin Liebke in his famous um, uh, monography about, about information warfare, um, mentioned one very interesting example from Information War for Game, um, which uh, um, uh, take place in uh, 1994. It was uh, two uh, teams, uh, blue and red by colors. Uh, and uh, uh, Martin Liebke uh, uh, saw what uh, these teams um, understood what is information warfare in different ways. Uh, how you could see in this quotation what uh, uh, blue team um, think about um, uh, about computer systems, uh, uh, viruses, worms, uh, and so on. In fact, they think about cyber warfare. And uh, red teams uh, saw information role for us psychological manipulation from media using propaganda, for example, using uh, uh, disinformation. And so question uh, which, which team uh, was right, which was wrong. And in fact, as were both teams uh, uh, were right. Uh, in some ways, because uh, when we are talking about information war form, I could present uh, this very simple model also. Information war or information warfare, it's like an umbrella definition. Uh, and at least um, uh, when we are talking about information war, information warfare, uh, on one hand, we could talk about uh, cyber war. Uh, uh, and on another about psychological war. And uh, you know what? Uh, cyber war is more about infrastructure, uh, about uh, um, computers, uh, um, about networks. Then uh, psychological war, psychological warfare, it's uh, about way 
people thinking about the uh, way people uh, see this world and uh, uh, making decision uh, according way um, image of a world. Uh, I'm personally, uh, I'm expert in this second uh, uh, kind of uh, warfare, it's in psychological warfare, and I will talk more about uh, this type of war uh, in my presentation. Um, and um, uh, uh, when we back and from the history of information war uh, to our days to uh, modern <laughs> modern days um, um, it's very important to say that uh, um, more active about uh, information war and information warfare uh, here in the region of central europe or, or northern europe uh, uh, post-Soviet uh, area and so on, um, we be uh, began um, talk about it uh, uh, in year 2013, but before it, uh, in year 2015, um, in um, scientific and not only scientific, but uh, experts world uh, uh, was very popular to talk about so-called Gerasimov doctor, uh, doctrine. And uh, it's, um, uh, uh, it's directly connected to our topic. Uh, what is Gerasimov doctrine? Um, it's according, according to Valery Gerasimov, it's a Russian general and he's chief of a, a general staff of uh, uh, Russian armed forces. Um, and um, in year 2015, in his uh, uh, public lecture uh, in one of uh, military academies of uh, Russian Federation, um, Gerasimov presented uh, his uh, view of uh, modern war or modern warfare. Um, you could see this uh, model on your screens. Um, it's uh, diff uh, different stage of uh, possible conflict uh, and different measures. Uh, military measures and uh, non-military measures, uh, for example, economical sanctions as non-military measures, uh, embargo, and so on. Of course, military measures, everyone knows, uh, strategic deployment and so on. But the uh, most interesting thing is uh, this part in between. Yeah. Uh, non-military and military measures, and is uh, you could see that it's uh, information warfare. In fact, information warfare in this model uh, is in between, and it's it belong uh, to military and non-military measures, both. And uh, uh, another interesting point, what uh, in this Gerasimov uh, view, um, uh, for example, if in different stages of conflict, uh, we have different military or non-military measures, this information war for us uh, uh, kind of measure, uh, it's um, uh, topical, to all period, to all stages, and it could uh, be used, uh, in fact, before this military conflict and uh, after it, of course, during it also. Uh, so maybe, maybe Gerasimov's doctrine uh, would not be so popular if in year 2013, um, world, in fact, saw a uh, kind of implementation of uh, this uh, doctrine or of this view uh, during uh, Ukrainian events. And uh, of course, I'm talking about illegal annexation of uh, Crimea, also uh, conflict in Donbass region supported by Moscow. In fact, uh, this uh, so-called uh, separatists uh, have this uh, Russian support. Uh, so um, 
Uh, also, I think that uh, everyone knows uh, that uh, this conflict uh, or this model of conflict implemented, uh, implemented by uh, Moscow in uh, in Ukraine uh, was called uh, as hybrid warfare. Also, talking about different measures, about uh, uh, different um, uh, modus operandi which Moscow used, uh, uh, used also propaganda, information warfare. Um, and um, uh, also it's a, uh, it's a big question. Does events of 2013 in Ukraine, it was real hybrid warfare or not? For example, one of my colleagues from Latvia, uh, Yanis Berzins, uh, thinking that it's uh, not, inf- uh, not hybrid warfare, but it's just a uh, uh, new or original Russian view of modern warfare. And uh, how you could see... Uh, uh, from quotation, uh, to Yanis Berzins, uh, Berzins uh, said, uh, wrote, uh, that uh, modern warfare is based on the idea that main battle space is in the mind. Yeah. And so we back to this uh, uh, concept that um, uh, we are talking uh, uh, about way uh, ways people think, and if you could uh, win war in the mind, uh, you really not need some uh, real military measures, or you uh, could not use military measures. Uh, a winning point could be outside of uh, this uh, kinetic uh, warfare. Um, and so information and psychological warfare or, um, um, occup- uh, occupying more and more space, in fact, in modern warfare and uh, in view of Russia Federation uh, to modern conflicts, to modern war. Uh, it's also a very important uh, point. Uh, of course, uh, I mentioned this uh, Crimea operation um, and uh, uh, another expert uh, 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 from Poland, Jolanta Derszewska, uh, in 2015, she made uh, a very interesting uh, analysis of uh, information warfare uh, during uh, this Crimea operation. Uh, and uh, it's also a quotation from uh, uh, her uh, report, uh, uh, where she just mentioned that uh, Crimean operation perfectly shows the essence of information warfare. And uh, what it means, it's really, it, if you're talking about Crimea, it's a little bit different than we're talking about Donbass. But in Crimea, uh, really, uh, inhabitants of uh, peninsula, in fact, uh, in, in fact, uh, live in Russian information space. It was domination of uh, uh, Russian or Russian uh, language TV uh, in Crimea. Uh, also, uh, if we're looking to this conflict in complex and uh, to, uh, to all these events in complex, uh, it should be mentioned that uh, um, uh, inhabitants of Crimea uh, have problems with uh, loyalty to Ukraine as to state. And uh, also uh, it wasn't a real uh, successful uh, policy of integration of these people uh, in uh, like a Ukrainian state agenda. Uh, and so it explains why uh, Russia uh, saw this windows of op- opportunities and uh, uh, this operation was implemented uh, when uh, it was so-called um, uh, Euromaidan in Kiev, it's uh, people's revolution. Uh, and uh, Russia just uh, made step, steps forward. Uh, but the uh, fact was that uh, uh, victim uh, does not resist. 
Uh, and it's explanation what this happened because the Russian speaking citizens of Ukraine who had uh, undergone necessary psychological inf- information treatment, in fact, intoxication. He was intoxicated by Kremlin uh, propaganda where he took part in the separatist scope. Uh, and in fact, support, support enemy, support uh, 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 Russia, which, uh, which implemented, uh, how it was mentioned, um, uh, this illegal annexation of uh, Crimea. Um, maybe another and uh, for, uh, most important question is, is information from far, far away? Uh, because, uh, okay, I, I mentioned Sun Tzu, uh, it's historically uh, 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 far, far away. I mentioned Ukraine and uh, sitting in Vilnius, you could say what, okay, uh, yes, it was uh, uh, information warfare as element of hybrid warfare in Crimea, in Ukraine, but it's another uh, geographic region. Maybe uh, Lithuania is part of NATO, part of the European Union, Ukraine not, uh, so on. So maybe um, this information warfare not topical now, and uh, it's really far, far away. Uh, unfortunately, not. And uh, um, I want to present uh, one example uh, from Lithuanian agenda. Uh, I like this example, uh, like uh, because uh, it's showing how information war for works and uh, how different types of information warfare, uh, cyber warfare, and psychological warfare, how it could work together. So, um, in uh, 20th of April 2017, uh, was hacked um, uh, content system of BNS, it's Baltic News Service. It's main news agency, uh, not only in Lithuania, but in fact in Baltic states. Uh, what it means? It, it means that uh, all media, uh, in fact, using information for uh, vi- from this um, information uh, uh, from Baltic News Service uh, as news. Uh, uh, it's very uh, like a, uh, it's wh- high quality information uh, media. Mm, totally uh, respect yeah, this work of uh, BNES uh, and so on. Uh, so, in this 20th of April of 2017, uh, it was hackers attack uh, against uh, how it was mentioned, this content system where uh, Baltic News Service uh, putting uh, news, putting texts um, where I'm of this uh, attack was to publish um, uh, fake news. Uh, you could see this fake news on, on the screen since it's in Lithuanian, but uh, I, I will it shortly pre- present. Uh, the title of this fake news uh, is Echo of Syria in Latvia. Uh, U.S. troops poisoned with uh, Iprit. Uh, Iprit, it's a, it's a chemical, um, uh, like a, uh, it's master gas and it's part of chemical weapons. Uh, so, uh, very interesting uh, case. Um, uh, Fortunately, uh, the IT uh, specialist of Baltic News Service, uh, they uh, very fast, uh, uh, they saw that something wrong happens with system. They find uh, this uh, text. Uh, they recognize that it's uh, not uh, um, 
article from uh, Baltic News Service authors, not article from Baltic News Service journalists, and it was blocked. It was not uh, published. And uh, any media not use this uh, news, uh, this fake news. Uh, but um, also, uh, we could talk about purpose of this attack, yeah? Uh, and uh, I put it presented in this way. Um, for example, uh, uh, made this false connection between U.S. Army, uh, our allies, our allies uh, of NATO, uh, our supporters uh, in this difficult situ situation of region, geopolitical situation of region. Um, so uh, in this message, U.S. Army was, uh, in fact, connected to chemical weapon. Uh, also, it was not directly raised doubts about uh, accusation of on the Syrian regime, uh, you know, dictator Bashar al-Assad, uh, because it's well known. But unfortunately, Syrian regime used chemical weapon in Syria in um, uh, the civil war. In Syria, in Syria, and used it against uh, civil people. Uh, it's in fact it's war crime, but uh, uh, this publication like a uh, rising dopes. But maybe not Syrian regime use this weapon because maybe it's U.S. army. Because look, we have this weapon also. Uh, U.S. army, and U.S. troops, uh, they presented it in a very interesting way. Uh, uh, one point it was uh, U.S. army presented as uh, irresponsible because we, by this narrative, by this false narrative, we bring the chemical weapon to Latvia. Uh, and also as not professional be, because soldiers intoxicated himself. Uh, and uh, the biggest time of this uh, attack of information warfare, uh, just to allow people's trust in the allies, U.S. Army and uh, NATO, because quite often uh, when we're talking about U.S. Army, uh, uh, about U.S. troops, uh, uh, we also qu quite often talking about NATO in general, because uh, United States of America is uh, like a main military power in uh, NATO, uh, NATO bloc. Uh, and uh, as it was mentioned, uh, it's very interesting uh, example uh, how uh, is, uh, measures of uh, cyber, uh, cyber attack, uh, cyber warfare, in fact, was used to publish um, fake news and not only publish, but uh, why, why it was important to uh, hack to system of Baltic news service. Uh, as was mentioned, um, other media in Lithuania, in the region, uh, they uh, taking news from uh, Baltic news service, they, they paying for this news, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's quality information. Um, so it was operation to legalize, in fact, fake news. Uh, fortunately, it was not uh, successful, uh, successful operation. Uh, it was the spread of this disinformation was prevent, but um, case very interesting, and it was uh, in. In Lithuania, it was first such kind of case, uh, cases. It was first case, but not uh, last. Uh, later was quite similar attacks uh, uh, against uh, other media, for example, TV Free or um, uh, also forgot name of newspaper, but uh, against uh, another Lithuanian newspaper uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, my presentation going to the end and uh, I just want to present some very short conclusions. Um, so modern information war could be 
divide into cyber, cyber war and psychological war, uh, but how you uh, saw symbiosis is also possible. And uh, I think that in future it uh, will be more and more examples of uh, symbiosis of these two types of information war. Uh, uh, pity, but information war is part of our, our reality. It's not uh, science fiction anymore. And it's, uh, it's real. And uh, everyone could... Uh, uh, face it uh, with uh, reality of information war. Uh, also, information war could be part of real military confrontation, and uh, quite often it's, it is, but also could be a way to implement uh, aggression using uh, non-military measures. And, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, we are a lot talking about uh, Russia and Lithuania because it's our neighbor and uh, <laughs> not 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 very friendly neighbor, unfortunately. So also, uh, and we understand it, but for example, uh, Russia could use military measures against Ukraine because Ukraine not belongs to NATO. But uh, in our situation, uh, um, uh, it's possible and uh, we see this uh, like examples uh, when it, uh, Kremlin using uh, so-called information war for not non kinetic measures uh, just to make some influence to uh, information space of Lithuania or Baltic states or Europe European Union. And of course, the aim of information psychological warfare is to affect people's way of thinking and decisions people make. So that's all in my presentation. And uh, now, as I understood, it's time for questions. 